Get our Bibles and turn to the book of Luke, chapter 11. We're going to stay in the prayer theme for just a little bit. We'll get back to our Hebrew soon. I may switch to a Sunday night for the topic of prayer and get back in our uh, Hebrews next week, maybe. I <clears throat> feel like we might be going in that direction. We'll stay on the prayer theme on our Sunday nights and then uh, get back in our study of Hebrews. Good study. We was in chapter 8. We studied the covenants and went through uh, the covenants, talked about the different ones, talking about the better covenant, covenant there in Hebrews. We looked at uh, the eight different covenants in the, uh, throughout the Word of God. And Jesus bringing in the better covenant, uh, the blood covenant, and uh, we'll get into those, get back into that study there in Hebrews uh, probably next week. But uh, I'm still in this theme of prayer, probably going to stay with it just a little bit. Um, I will repeat some things from time to time as we do that, as I will tonight, I know, um, but it's necessary. We need to make things uh, stick and get a hold of it, get an understanding of it, and uh, make it stick real good. Amen. All right, the book of Luke, chapter number 11 this evening. The book of Luke, chapter number 11. <clears throat> the disciples here has come to the Lord in verse 11, uh, verse 1 of chapter Luke 11. Luke chapter 11 verse 1 says, And it came to pass that as he was praying a certain, in a certain place, at least one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples, and he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth, give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and say unto him at midnight, and say, uh, Go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine is in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within answering, answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are in bed with me. I cannot rise and give to thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth, and I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. And Lord, I pray that you'll take the thoughts and the message that's here and help us tonight. Lord, I know we're few in number, but it doesn't take but a couple for you to show up. You said if there'd be two or three gathered in your name, you'd be there in the midst. And I pray that, Lord, you'd help these few that's gathered. And, Lord, I believe that if we'd get a hold of the principles of prayer and be much about it, Lord, I believe we could turn this town upside down for your name's sake. And I ask you, please help us. My God, my Lord, my Savior, I pray you'd help us tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Now, we're going to talk about this matter of prayer again a little bit this evening. And uh, I've mentioned, asked some questions about prayer. What's the matter? What's wrong with it? Give me one that works in. You ain't going to play that game. All right, there you go. Uh Talking about prayer, I'm going to deal with the thought, thought or the theme tonight on the instructions of prayer and what praying is. Uh, it's not praising, but you can praise in it. Uh, I've, I've been engaged in prayer with the Lord a few times, and uh, it, get, it get good, as we say. 
Uh, the Spirit of God begin to work in my soul, stir in my bosom, and I just go to praising the Lord. So it can be that, but that's not the primary principles that goes with prayer. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not just confession, but it is part of it to confess. Because as we continue in prayer with the Lord, uh, we'll confess our sins and, and get those out of the way that the Lord might uh, be able to hear us and help us. Amen. Now, Colossians 4, 2 says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So we, we know that there's the, the instructions of continuing in prayer, to be in prayer. Uh, I want to make some comments about some things that, that I want you to get a hold of. And I, I'm, I'm hurrying, I know, and I got, to, I got to slow down. So I want you to get a hold of these things and think much on them. Think about the church of Acts. The Acts of the Apostles that was recording the Acts that were going on in the church. What was going on? They, they had a church that was a growing church. You'd see 1,000 saved here, 5,000 saved there, 3,000 saved there. They were seeing multitudes on top of multitudes getting saved by the grace of God. One of the most outstanding common factors to that was it's a praying church. I don't think you're going to have a growing church without a praying church. A, a praying church will not just be a growing church, but a praying church will be a giving church. Folks that's giving their heart in prayer for a selective cause don't have a bit of problem given to that cause. <coughs> if your heart's in it, so will your billfold be. Now the proof text to that is, is the Lord said uh, that your heart be where your treasure was, didn't he? Amen. So... Uh, our treasures, what things are most important to us, will be outstanding in our life by the financial support we give it. Hey Amen. You love something, you want, it won't bother you to give to it. Uh, my youngins, grand youngins come to me and say, I need something, not won't, but need something. I don't have a bit of problem giving to a need. Don't have a bit of problem with it. If one of my youngins come up and said, Dad, we're up against it. We had a bad week. We need, we need a little bit of help. I don't have a problem giving to needs. Amen. Amen. And when you know that there's a need for a facility or a function, you don't, you don't have a problem giving to it if your heart's in it. Amen. Amen. People that ain't giving good, their heart ain't there. Amen. So they got heart trouble. Amen. So a growing church, the church of Acts, is a growing church. It's a giving church. It's a going church. They was outgoing. They was going and doing. They was, they was getting to the folks and helping folks. And, and I know we've been very careful during the pandemic. But I've been studying on that thing a little bit. And you know what? In our histories, we've had a scarlet fever. They had polio. They've had all kinds of sicknesses that people's dealt with through the years. They even had a bunch of folks that was uh, plagued with leprosy, highly contagious. Let's don't stop going just because there's a disease in the midst. Amen. Use some common sense. Use what protection you need to. Do what you've got to do. But I'm telling you, church, we need to get back at being church. Amen? Amen. we got to get back to what God's doing. If you really believe Jesus is coming soon, we got to get going. Amen? we got to be active about uh, doing something for the cause of Christ and the church. Amen. The church of Acts was a giving church, a growing church, a going church. Now, this matter of prayer, it reveals some things. It will reveal some things about our lives. Now, if I say you, that means me too, okay? My English might not be proper, but sometimes I get wound up and say you. Well, you means me too because I'm just being a messenger boy. And the message to you is a message to me as well. So when we, when we think about prayer and what it reveals, one, it reveals a desire for God. 
it shows we got a desire to come to God, right? Otherwise, wouldn't be there. If I don't have a desire to talk to you, I won't talk to you. So when I engage conversation with you, that means I desire to engage conversation with you. So our, our, our prayer life with the Lord reveals our desire for God. It also re reveals our devotion to God. If you don't have a good prayer life, you're not devoted to God like you and I should be. If we don't have a good prayer life, we're not devoted to God like we should be. So prayer reveals our desire for God. Prayer reveals our devotion to God. And prayer reveals our dependence on God. Some folk don't need nobody. Some folks got the attitude that they don't need nobody. Some folks got the attitude in that they don't need God. It's obvious because they don't pray to Him. They don't call on Him. They don't ask for Him to help. They can handle it. Hello? I got news for every one of those folks. There'll be a day you will need God. There'll be a time to where you will bow and humble yourself and call out, to the mighty God of heaven. Amen. <coughs> All of us needs God. Amen. I got news for you. You can't take another breath without God letting you take breath. Amen. Amen. Daniel 5 said our breath was in his hand. Amen. He gives us life. Amen. Amen. I could get into detail of that, but we've got, we've got life because God gave us life. So prayer reveals our desire for God, our devotion to God, our dependence on God. But it also reveals our delight in God. If you keep going to somebody and talking to them, you must like them pretty good. I'm, I got a whole bunch of stuff to preach here. I'm just, I want this to get in. I, we got to get a hold of these things. We've got a desire for God, we'll pray to Him. We've got a devotion to God, we'll pray to Him continually. Amen. We, we've got a, a dependence on God. We're going to come to him calling for the need of help that we can do. Amen. We've got a delight in him. We're going to come talking to him. Amen. You, you, you talk to folks you like too that talks about stuff like you do. In a little while, we'll break service. Folks will be standing out there on the porch talking about something. Others of you will be in here talking about something else. And the reason I ain't in here talking to you girls is because y'all talking about shoes and pocketbooks, and I don't care about shoes and pocketbooks. So I'm going to probably be on the porch talking about cars, guns, hunting, fishing, something like that. Yeah, fishing's a good thing. Now, Miss Sue, she's probably going to leave y'all with your sandals and your, your flip-flops and your pocketbooks and come talk to us about fishing. Yeah, she's a little more about fishing than that foolishness stuff. Amen. That's good folks to fish. Amen. The disciples were fishermen. They like to go fishing. Now, sometimes they got in trouble going fishing. But anyway, they like fishing. But prayer reveals our delight in God. So we pray. That reveals our desire for God, our devotion to God, our dependence on God, and our delight in God. Y'all get those? Now, why don't we pray? Just don't answer. Just think a minute. Why don't we pray? Why are we not more about prayer than what we are. Let me give you five things on this. I'm going to try to get to the meat here in just a minute. Let me give you five things on this while we don't pray. Something to think about. <clears throat> you got your Bibles? Look in James with me. James chapter 4. Man, that was good. Turned right to it. James chapter 4. Page 1309, Schofielders. James chapter 4, verse 17 says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. So you've got two stages of sin there. One, somebody that knows to do good, that's a, that's a commissional sin. That, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's something they ought to do and, and, or something that they're doing wrong because they know they ought to be doing something. And then there's the commissional sin of not doing what you should be doing. So you got the twofold part of sin right there. And uh, I, I'm going to come back to this later 
next week probably talk about hindrances in our prayer life, but I want to mention just this. Uh, one of the things that keeps us from praying is iniquity in our heart. Now, you say, preacher, I, I'm devoted to God. I'm dedicated to God. I'm sold out to God. I'm, I'm all I should be for God. Uh, that part, that iniquity in my heart, that's not going to apply to me. I say, okay. James 4, 17 says, him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it's a sin. Do you know something you should have done for God today and you didn't? It's called sin. You knew you should have done something for God today and you didn't do it. That's a sin. That's iniquity. So iniquity in our hearts sometimes keep us from praying. When we've done bad, we don't want to meet our parent or our authority when we've done something we know we shouldn't have done. We sort of try to dodge that in some way or another. That's, that's the same thing that goes on in prayer life. We don't pray to God sometimes because we know there's something in our life that's not right and we don't want to have to deal with it. So iniquity in the heart will keep you from sin. Ignorance of the mind will keep you from sin. I mean, keep you from praying. Get it right. Iniquity in your heart will keep you from praying. That's a sin. And then, and then ignorance of the mind will keep us from praying. Ignorance of the mind is, is we don't know what all the Bible tells us about prayer. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've been studying and preaching uh, for a number of years. I've been, I've been helping teaching since I was 17 years old. And I'm 50 and none of your business today. So from 17 to 56, well, 57 would be 40 years, wouldn't it? Is that right? Next year will be 40 years that I've been active in the, in the ministry. Wow, that just made me feel old. My baby boy just turned 30. My baby girl's not far from it. <laughs> 30 of them. How about that? Anyway, I'm finding out in my newest study of, of prayer, there's a lot. I ain't even started to study. There's some stuff about prayer that I thought I know, and I asked a question in the opening of this. The disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. And I ask you, do you know how to pray? Do we need to be taught more? Yes, we do. I'll answer that for all of us. We all need to learn more about it and be taught more about it. Amen. So the ignorance of the mind, we need to, put, we need to be in, in the Bible more. And, and sometimes I'm searching for stuff to study, but I'm not just looking for just any topic. I'm wanting the specific to topic that the Lord wants me to study so I can preach the message we all need to hear. And it's important. You remember I've told you, I learned a long time ago, you don't know who's going to be in our midst that it could be a last service for them. I've preached a lot of folks' last service and didn't know it. Amen. And uh, that's a fearful thing. So I try to be mindful, try to be careful about that. But this matter of, of, of study and the ignorance of our mind, we need to study the Bible about prayer. Get the Bible down and go through that thing and study it out. I, I was looking at Acts, the book of Acts, 25 times the topic of pray, prayer, prayed is mentioned 25 times in the book of Acts. I think it's pretty much serious about prayer. Amen? They was either praying for healing, praying for release of prison, praying for God to touch, praying for folks to get saved. They was praying about a lot of stuff when you study the book of Acts. So there's the iniquity of our heart keeps us from prayer. Ignorance of our mind keeps us from prayer. Infirmities of our bodies will keep us from prayer. I went in the back room of our house on Jennings Road years ago after being surrendered to the ministry for a little while. <coughs> I was catching a lot of flack, if you can use that word, I was, I was being berated much by church folk because I'd stepped out full-time into the ministry. I left my job and went full-time to do God's work, and a lot of folks give me trouble about that. Now, I don't know about y'all, but if God's called some young man or some young woman to the full work of Christ, I'm going to shout with them. What's the matter? Don't you think God can take care of them? 
or are you jealous? I've looked back. I think a lot of them was jealous. They thought, man, he's going into a life of ease. He thinks he ain't got to work no more. I got news for you. It's a lot harder work than plowing ditches. Full-time ministry is a lot harder than plowing ditches. I didn't get not one single amen on that. That tells me a lot. That tells me a lot of folks don't know what prayer life is about. A lot of folks don't know what it is to be fully dedicated to something and to labor in that. They, they, a lot of folks think if you ain't got scars on your hands or calluses on your knuckles, you ain't worked. I got news for you. It's a lot harder to pray than it is to work. Common work day for us is eight hours. Is that normal? That's what we look at, common days. Eight hours. Most of you put in nine or ten. Because you got to do stuff before you get started on the clock. You got to do stuff after you get off the clock. A lot of folks put in more than the eight hour requirement for their day. I got I got a little task for you. If you think it's easy work tomorrow, call in sick. And you can tell the truth. You can tell them you're sick of this place. But don't tell them that. They might fire you. But just call in sick. And pray all day. Spend all day in active prayer. Minus feeding, minus going to the potty. Spend all day in the prayer. And then you come back to me Sunday and you tell me exactly how easy it was that day that you spent in prayer. And if you run out of stuff to pray for, I'll give you a list. Prayer life is tough. I've told you about a week I spent down in Alabama. I spent a week down there with nothing but prayer and supplication to God. Absolutely wore my body out. And I never dug a ditch, never set a stone. I never built a building. None of those things. But it physically wore me slap out. You folks been in here the other week when we had a good service. God moved, man, it was great in here. Was you a little bit tired that afternoon? Did that sort of suck the energy out of you, so to speak? I spend more than 30 minutes at it and see what happens. You, you, spend, you spend a little while in prayer and see what happens. I got you a real good example. A lot of folks look at Jesus as this little feeble feller. I don't. I think he's a pretty good fit guy. I think he eat right. I think he was healthy. I don't think he looked like he could just barely get up the hill. I think he was healthy. He went in the garden one night and prayed a little bit. What happened? The angels of glory came and strengthened him because that time of prayer was such a harsh uh, action to his body. The Bible says that his sweat became his blood. So if you really engage in prayer, it's not, it's not an easy task. It's work. So there's the, there's the infirmity to the body. That's why we don't pray a lot. I've got down to pray a lot and, and, and prayed a little. I went in. I started off on, I went into the back bedroom there, back room uh, there at the house on Jennings Road because I'd been berated by everybody and, and things just wasn't unfolding the way I thought they should unfold. And, and, and I was needing some money to pay for the vehicle we was driving. And that payment was due that Friday. And that Friday night I told her, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going in yonder. Don't come in there. Don't bother me. Just leave me alone. Got on my face that night and spent the night praying and begging for God to give me an answer. I wanted an answer that night. I wanted to know exactly what God in heaven was going to do. I needed it that night. I prayed. I couldn't sleep. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I tried to get my mind out of the way and I went through thoughts of, did I make a mistake? Did I, did I step too far? 
Did I, did I do this out of the flesh? Was this me or was it God? I need some help from heaven. And I prayed and I prayed and I couldn't sleep and I prayed and I prayed. I couldn't sleep and I prayed and I prayed. I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do by 5 o'clock. I'm, God, what am I going to do? I can't sleep. I can't rest. I, can't, I, can't, I just can't do nothing. 7 o'clock, I woke up. I went to sleep for two hours after praying that and didn't even realize I'd went to sleep till I woke up and I realized, good night, it's 7 o'clock, the sun's come up. I, how long have I been asleep? I looked and I seen I'd been asleep two hours. Now, I couldn't sleep, remember? I said, Lord, I can't sleep. Now, I woke up two hours later. I had planned to help her dad over there. I went over and got on the roof that day. I didn't get the answer I thought I needed that night, okay? Now, you may, you may never been upset with God and thought God didn't answer you, but I have. And I thought, well, I didn't get the answer I needed. And I told her to come out of the room. I said, I'm going back to work Monday. I'm going to call the sheriff's office and see if they'll let me come back, and I'm going to go back to work. She had that defeated look on her face, and I walked out the door, went over to her dad's, and we started working. A little while later, I was up on the roof, and they said, Hey, telephone's for you. I said, tell them I'll call them back. And they said, uh-uh, you better come get this one. I said, what's the matter? And he said, I don't know, Judy's crying. I thought, oh, Lord, here I am trying to do all I can. Now she's done, something else doesn't happen. Y'all, y'all ever think like that? I do. I'm like, because I think worse first. And I'm thinking, Lord, what in the world now? I try, I've tried with my heart to follow you. I come down off a ladder and, what's the matter, baby? And she's crying. But it ain't the kind of crying I was expecting. It was almost that engine on the woohoo path. She was glory hallelujah and crying. Now, they didn't catch that, but I did. And I finally got her calmed down enough to say, what's up? She said, you ain't going to believe it. I said, I know I ain't. What's up? <laughs> she said, guess what coming in the mail today? I said, I don't know. You know, I ain't always perfect. She said, our tax check come in the mail today. This is Saturday. There's nothing there to make my payments and get me caught, caught up on my, on my loan. I was supposed to have paid it Friday and didn't. Of course, you know, there's a couple of days you get a grace there, but I went and made that payment Monday, and I said, okay. Not my time, but your time. I had to go through that wrestling match and see if what I had in my heart was my heart. Or my head. And through that night of prayer, through that night of struggling, I know when I come out of that room that God had put it in my heart to go full time in the ministry despite what everybody else thought. And I know it. I believed it to my very soul. But I didn't get the answer I wanted that time. But a few hours later, God come through and gave me the answers I needed. We don't pray sometimes because of the infirmity of our body. We don't pray sometimes because it's an invasion of our time. When I mentioned a while ago, you praying all day tomorrow, taking the day off, most of you probably had a thought going on of, I can't do that, I've got to do this. I can't do that, I've got to do that. Right? We've got so much going on in our world, we don't even have time to take off and pray like we need to. I've been busy all day long, don't feel like I've done a thing. I've been wide open all day doing stuff and studying, doing stuff and studying all day and don't feel like I've accomplished anything. And I spent a little while in prayer and then come in here and preach on it, teach on it. You know, reason we don't pray a lot of times is because it's an invasion to our time. It takes up from what we could be doing something else productive. Now, us silly heads need to wake up and think about what we just said. We think that it will keep us from doing something productive. So we don't have time to pray. 
Why you won't be over there praying all the time? Can't you get over here and do something? Y'all remember Mary and Martha when Jesus come to the house? Mary's down there at his feet. And Martha's the busybody and wants to get something done. She, come, she finally come out. Lord, listen. Can you not get her up from there and get her in here to working? And the Lord said, no, what she's doing is needful. See, sometimes we think all this other work stuff that we got to do is the most needful thing. When that's not the truth of the matter. You'll not accomplish what you need to accomplish for God without first bathing it in prayer. So we need, we need to pray. So the invasion of our time. And another thing to keep you from praying is the invasion or the influence, the invasion of our time and the influence of our adversary. The devil going to crawl up on his shoulder. You ain't got time for that. What good's it going to do anyway? I was listening a while ago, two or three different times, I was listening a while ago to Dr. Harold B. Seitler preach a message from 1973. 1973, he preached a message on God can. And I'm not saying this to be wrong, but dignified Dr. Harold B. Seitler went to the pulpit with nothing but a text. And God blessed that congregation. You ought to go listen to it sometime. It's all over the internet. You can find it somewhere, different sites. You ought to take, you ought to take about 25, 30 minutes out and just listen to that a little bit. Now, in that, he uses the text where they ask the question, can God provide a table in the wilderness? And his message is, God can. Do you really believe God can provide a table in the wilderness? What about a table in 2021? <coughs> what about God taking care of us in 2021? Do we really believe God can? Do we believe God can save our family member? Do we believe God can turn this life around or God can... Turn that life. Do we really believe God can? Then why aren't we praying to that God? Why aren't we talking to our Father as we're instructed here in this prayer list for us in Luke 11? Luke 11, he gives us an instruction about prayer. First, he gives us one, he gives us an invitation. Verse 2 and again, verse number 9. He says, and when you pray, that's an invitation. If I was to say, and Scott, when you come to the house, bring Pepsi. Does that sound like an invitation to y'all? Hey, and when you come, bring me a Coke. Doesn't that sound like an invitation? He said, and when you pray, there's an invitation that he's given us to come to him in prayer. An invitation to pray. He wants us to come to him and pray. When you, when you look at the scriptures in Psalm 50 verse 15 says, and call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Jeremiah 33, 3, call upon me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. When's the last time God done something for you? Not somebody else, but God done something for you that was more than you expected. Could it be that you haven't been calling on him and asking him to do great and mighty things which thou knowest not? John 14, 13, And whatsoever ye ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's true. If that's not true and we got to tear that out of the Bible, Let's tear the rest of it up. We'll go home, get our fishing rods, and go fishing with Miss Sue. It's there. Now, where we get in trouble with that is uh, we don't understand God's timing on things. And I'll get with that one just in a minute. I'll give you that when we close up here. 
God's given an invitation here to his children to pray. The redeemed to pray. Because he says, he says, say, our father. I'm his child. He's my father because I'm redeemed. Amen. So there's an invitation to the redeemed, to the children of God. Now, it's our duty to pray. We, we have a responsibility to pray. We should, we should, part of our duty is it should be a regularity to pray. And it's our redemptive duty to pray. These other folks need to be saved. We need to be praying for, and we ought to be praying to God because he saved us. So there's an instruction, an invitation to come and pray. There's the illustration of praying. He deals with personal prayer. He deals with a pattern of prayer. Verse 2, he talks about in that, he gives you that there's a reverence in prayer, a request in prayer, and a receiving of prayer. The reverence there is verse 2. He says, hallowed be thy name. And you study the word hallowed out. That uh, Study the word hallowed out. If you'll study that word, it means to give great reverence to someone. He ain't the man upstairs. And I get bent out of shape Inside, when I hear somebody say or make a reference to him being the man upstairs, that tells me you don't know him. I could say the man up there in that house, I don't know him. But if I say my father, then you know I know him. Amen? So there's, there's that personal pattern that we have when we call on him, we call on him in reverence, we call on him as our Father, we, we call on Him with a great honor to Him. Very respectfully, we call on Him. Then we give a request. Verse number 3 says, give us this day. Uh, give us day by day our daily bread. We're asking for something. Many of us gave thanks for the food we've had today. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that I asked Him before for the food I had today. I didn't say, Lord, I need something for breakfast. I need something for dinner. And I wonder how many of us ask for our daily bread, spiritually speaking, today. Father, I need some spiritual bread. I need some spiritual strength. By the way, for those that don't do bread, the Bible says something about bread being strength. So study that out before you get too funny about your bread stuff. <clears throat> you need strength. See, these Bible verses to feed all our little special wants. <laughs> if we twist it just right, it'll fit. <clears throat> but it does say that the, our strength, one of our strengths is the bread. So... Are we praying to the Lord day by day for our bread that we need? Did we or did you, I'll use this meaning you only, did you pray that God would give your pastor the message, the bread that you needed for your soul tonight? That's what we're, you're supposed to do. Pray God help me to get exactly what we need. So we've got the, the illustration of prayer. We've got a personal prayer. We've got a pattern for prayer, the reverence, the request, and the receiving. Verse number 13 talks about uh, receiving. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Now, let me, let me go back and, and, and give you a thought because of the Holy Spirit there is, is great need for us. A lot of things that we ask for are not needs. A lot of things that we ask for are desires. He does say that he'll give, the, uh, give us our heart's desires, but that's when we're in tune with him, amen. He's not going to give me my heart's desire if it's a sinful thing. That's a foolish request. But when we have a godly request and we ask and it's our heart's desire and we're living... 
in, in the right rim with him. Uh, what I mean there is we don't have iniquity or something that separated us between him and us and our fellowship. Then when we're, when we're living right, walking right, we can ask things that's within his will and he answers. So receive him. And then the, the promise of our, our providence in verse number 9, he, he mentions that there. Uh, how that he promises, and I say, ask, and it shall be given, seek, and you shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So illustration of prayer, there's personal prayer, there's the pattern for prayer, and there's the providences and the promise of providences. Uh, he talks here in, in, in chapter 11, he's talking about the importunity. He said because of this man's importunity, he's dealing with the repeated request. Now, sometimes we are very repetitive in our saying. Now, when he says don't be repetitive in that, he means in a void repetitiveness. Don't be saying the same thing over and over again without any meaning to it. A lot of folks uh, in a lot of uh, facilities that call themselves churches will have repetitive prayers that they repeat, that they just go through the formula of it. They just say in it. Be no different than the way some folks say thank you. They really didn't mean it. They just said it because they know it's supposed to be said. You follow me? And for me to say thank you, well, love you is a word that's thrown out that is a repetitive used word that oftentimes doesn't have the real meaning in it. They just say love you as a way of saying bye or see you later. They say love you. Do they really love? If they do, then that's, that's got some context to it. If they don't, then they're doing a repetitiveness. The Lord, in directing of prayer, and he talks about not repeating as the hypocrites, he's talking about stuff that's void or vain, something that's empty going through. He's not talking about continually calling on him for something that's necessary. Now, here's my proof to that. When you go to the Lord's prayer in the garden, he prayed three times. He went three times and prayed to the Lord. Jesus went three times and prayed. Same type prayer, same prayer. Three times. The Apostle Paul in the book of Corinthians tells us about how that he asked of the Lord three times for the same exact thing, and that's that the thorn be removed. So that type of repetitiveness is okay. It's the void and vain repetitive prayer. That, that's empty praying. That, that's just a formality. Uh, he's telling us not to just go through it in a formal way just to be saying it. Don't be like the hypocrites in emptiness, but when you pray, pray with some heart in it. Amen. So, as Matthew 6 verse 7 says, but when you pray, use not vain reputation, repetitions. I've heard some folks, when, when they pray, they're going to go through a minute of formality. They're going to pray the same thing that they prayed the last time in a formality way. If it's got heart to it, it's not vain repetition. If it's a formality, it's vain repetition. So, as Jesus did in the garden, as Paul did over the thorn, they did that. Now, when you go look at Jesus' prayer in the garden and Paul's prayer over the thorn, I mentioned a little bit about this the other week when I was talking. It appears that, that neither of them got their prayer answered. Yet they did. As, as I prayed that Friday night, it appeared I did not get my prayer answered. The difference was it wasn't answered in my way or my time, but it was answered in his way on his time. And there was a processing that Curtis needed to go through. There was things that I needed to air out. There was some emotions and the feelings going on in my bosom that I needed to get out is probably why it was held up just a little bit. See, God knows how to take you through that refiner's fire, and that's probably where we'll be Sunday. I was actually studying that this morning. We're probably going to come talk about a refiner's fire, fire Sunday. This, this things that we go through, the process that we go through in prayer, God is doing it in developing us. See, God knows tomorrow before today. God knowed what would be going on today, year ago, years ago. 
That doesn't take away your free will, but it does show the sovereignty, the all-knowingness of God. Therefore, it gives him the ability to plan it out just right to where it's going to come in just exactly like it needs to to develop us in conforming us to the image of the Son of God like he wants to. See, that's God's ultimate plan is to conform us to the image of the Son of God. Otherwise, he wouldn't have used the word being predestinated to be conformed to the image of the Son of God. There is predestination in the Bible, but it's predestinated to be conformed to the image of the Son of God. It's predestined for good, not the evil. Amen. So, the importunity of praying. Sometimes we say prayers... And I'm speaking from experience. We say prayers sometimes so we can say we said the prayer. We use it as an excuse. Rather than the importunity, rather than repetitive, rather than continuing to pray that God do something, we pray a prayer just so we can say, well, I prayed for God to help in this such a way. It didn't work out that way, so I'm going to go this way. Well, I prayed God would give me a different job so I wouldn't have to stay at this place and miss services and so on, but... You know, it didn't work out that way, so I'm on. Sometimes we pray prayers so we'll have an excuse to go a direction that we want to go rather than what we know God wants us to do. Might be God lets you go that way just to prove to you that you've done what you wanted to more than what you know he needed you to do. Amen. Did y'all get that? And I started that whole statement with, I'm speaking from experience because I've been there done. That's what I'm saying. You understand? That ain't, that ain't a slam at you. That's saying I've already been there and done that. I know. I, I'm, I've been guilty of doing those things. So for us in this opportunity of praying, repeating a prayer, continuing to pray for a same topic is not wrong. Jesus is teaching in this very passage here that the fellow wasn't going to get up and get no bread for him, but because of his importunity, because he wouldn't quit, because he wouldn't go away, because he wouldn't let up, because he knowed he had to have it to be able to help out his friend that come to see him, he kept on knocking. Jesus is teaching us, when you've got something that you know needs to be, keep praying about it. Don't quit. You know, if you really want something, you'll try harder and harder and harder to get it. If you really want it, you'll stay after it. You'll stay after it. You won't quit. You'll stay after it. You really want something, you'll stay after it. That's why I don't play a piano. I want it, but I don't want it bad enough. I didn't stay after it. A year of piano lessons was all I wanted. I preferred to play football. Why in the world would I want to be playing on a piano when I could be out in the field playing football? Didn't make sense to me, but it did Dennis because he wanted that worse than he wanted the football. People learning to play the guitar. I know the chords on the guitar. I can play a guitar. Not good, but I can play one. I can sing. Not good, but I can sing. If you really want something to be good at or to be such and such, you're going to go after it. You're going to stay in prayer on that thing. Well, Lord, I pray you'll, (coughs) and then you give up and you quit, and that's it. One, maybe you didn't trust him to be able to do what you've asked. You didn't trust him that he would do what you were asking, or you didn't want it bad enough. See, we've got to want these things. Amen. We've got to, this guy here in Luke 11 wanted some help for his friend and he stayed till he got what he needed. Receiving answers. He teaches us about receiving answers. 13 said, uh, if you good, if your father's on earth knows how to give good gifts to your youngins, how much more your heavenly father knows to give you the Holy Spirit? There's no greater gift besides salvation that you can have other than being filled with the Holy Ghost. Because if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're getting leadership from God. You're going and doing and working what God wants you to do if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. 
Amen, preacher. That matter of being filled with the Holy Ghost, you're in unity with the Holy Spirit of God. You're in unison with God in the work that He wants done. Things are where it needs to be. Amen. Receiving answers. Understand this. It's His watch. His timing. His watch. He'll bring the answer about at His time. It's His will. He knows, He knows, He knows exactly when and, and how to bring about. It's His way. He'll do it the way He sees fit to do it. If we're not careful in our prayer life, we can get prideful. And pride's a sin. It's one of those listed in, in Proverbs 6 or 7 that is one of those things that God hates is pride. It's a proud look. He hates a proud look. He don't want folks proud standing in their own thing thinking they're better than somebody else. Amen. God, God's not about pride. He's about humility. And he said, if you'll humble yourself, he'll exhaust, exhaust you in due time. See, God's got his own time and answer these things. And when we function within God's watch, within God's will, and within God's way, things will take place just like God wants it to. And we know that all things work together for good to them and love God. So when we're in the will of God, the way of God, the work of God, it's going to happen and do just the way God wants it to, to everybody's benefit. If God's working all things through in my life, he's, 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 he's about doing what's best for my life, and He's about what's best in your life. He's working all things for good. If He's doing that in my life and doing it in your life, and all of us is going through that, then all of us is working together. We're all on the same page for the accomplishment that God has. See, we don't know by, by following God's watch, God's will, and God's way, we don't know who might get saved about what time God might save them and who else might get saved because that got saved. And we just we just trust God. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him. He'll direct our path. So there's some instructions that we need in prayer. But remember these things. Prayer will, re will reveal our desire to God, our devotion to God, our dependence on God, and our delight in God. Prayer is an important aspect to Christians. You know, there's one outstanding difference between the world and Christians. We pray. We pray to a God that can. God can. Since, you know, we're bad to say if and I am, <clears throat> not if God can provide a table in the wilderness. No, it's since God can provide a table in the wilderness. That wilderness is, is no different than, than God being able to do in 2021. Since God can provide a table in the wilderness, literally rain bread down out of heaven and blow in the quail, since God can out of the atmosphere bring us good bread and out of the wind bring us good chicken, I mean, if you got bread and chicken, you're in good shape. And that's in the wilderness where they had not the ability to provide what they needed for food. And you said, man, that's a bad place to be in the wilderness. It is, especially when there ain't a whole lot of creeks out there. But then again, God can touch a rock and bring forth the water. So God can. God can. The ability to and since God can for them, God can for us because he's not a respecter person. How's your prayer life? Are we, are we meeting 
with the Lord like we're supposed to be in prayer. If I'm not right in my prayer life, I promise you this, I'm not right in my Christian walk with the Lord. Again, no amens. If you're not right in your prayer life, you are not right where you need to be with the Lord. You're not right in your devotion, your dependence, your delight. You're just not right. So our prayer life is most vital to our Christian walk with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well... I hope you can swallow that and I can swallow that and chew on it for a day or two and learn a little something from it. Amen? Amen. All right. Prayer request this evening. Got anything on there, brother? Anybody's got prayer requests? We'll take a few prayer requests and then we're going to have a little time of prayer. Miss Cheyenne, uh, one of Brittany's young, is not feeling well, so pray for her. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Okay, good deal. Which house are they in? What number? 1906. I know where the house is. I just want to know which which house. 1906. I got it. Okay. Okay. I got The Beatty family needs a lot of prayer. They've got multiple issues going on there with Miss Kelly herself, and she a lot of times is dismissed as old Judy saying she don't ask for prayer, <clears throat> and sort of dismisses her own real needs in physical body uh, because Carissa's in great need, uh, baby Ella's in great need. Uh, baby Noah's in need, and then the other child they've got's got some things going on as well. So uh, the Beatty family needs a lot of prayer, so lift them up to the Lord in prayer. Anyone else? Miss Kay? What about Kay Ayers? When's hers? Okay, all right, remember Miss Kay Ayers this week? Miss Judy's got an MRI coming up the 15th, 17th on Saturday. I think it's on the 15th. So pray for her. They're going to do an MRI of her neck and uh, see what's going on in there, see if they can find a fix for that without having to do surgery, so pray much for that. Remember Brother Jeremy's uh, mother, Miss Frances? Um, she's had some testing done the last few days, got some got some stuff going on. They're really not 100% sure what it is. They've done the scopes, and uh, they've got a, another little phase they're going to go through, so pray they can find out the problem and get it, get it resolved, but that's for Miss Frances Simpson. That's Jeremy's mother. So remember, remember her in prayer. Uh, remember Brother Bobby, uh, Pastor's Monticello Baptist. Uh, Brother Bobby's in serious condition with cancer. Uh, they're going to try to do some stuff to help him. The outlook at present is not good at all. Um, so they're hoping that they can do do some aggressive attack to it. If not, then. He's short-term living. Uh, so pray for Brother Bobby and his wife as well. She's got some things going on too. Y'all 
All right, remember Brother Jack Tucker? He's got a lot of needs there, so pray much for him. Pray for Miss Shirley, uh, Miss Tammy, in, in their whole situation there, everybody that's dealing with it. Remember Pee Wee and Martha? Lift them up to the Lord in prayer. Okay, all right, remember Darius is unspoken and uh, continue to pray for Miss Nikki from her procedure today. Thank the Lord she was able to go through it and come out of there, so praise the Lord for that. She needs to be able to, the big thing, pray on Miss Nikki right now, pray that they can get her where she can get some nutrients in because she's not had any nutrients in that. 35 days or so, yeah. Been several weeks, so much prayer for Miss Nikki, please. Brother Scott's got some unspoken. Unspoken, Miss Kay. Anyone else got some requests to see me? Anything else online? All right, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. Um, do pray much about Sunday. Pray for lost folk to get saved. Uh, I want us to be more like the Church of Acts, a growing church, a going church, a giving church. Amen. If we could get a hold of the little old message Preacher Joe preached many years ago, he used the illustration in it about the little old boy that was given to God and was talking about his shovel, and he said God's shovel was bigger than his shovel. And if we get a hold of that giving to God and the work of God, God gives back much more than we can give him. Amen. Amen. And God has given me much more than I've ever given him. And that's in every, every aspect of life. Amen. Amen. All right. Anyone else got a request this evening before we pray? Pray much for the churches. Uh, I listened to some camp meeting uh, that I used to go to out in Kentucky. I listened to that early today and uh, listened to the theme of the preachers and what a lot of churches is going through or what the theme going on in the churches is uh, much across many churches. A lot of churches are struggling. A lot of churches are hurting right now. And uh, there's a lot of things going on. And I'm going to use it again, but the preacher made a statement um, about the pandemic didn't cause problems. It revealed problems. And I'll let you chew on that. All right. No other requests. We'll pray. Our